Okay, in this video on sections 4.3 and 4.4 on sketching a graph of a function, I'm going to solve the example that was provided in the notes. I'm basically going to go back over what I talked about. So, I expanded all of the um, parts of the question so that we can really focus on them. So, the first thing we had was to determine the domain. The domain comes from the original function, and we look for the restrictions. That means uh, we look in the denominator for what causes the denominator to equal zero. In this case, zero cubed is zero, and that would cause the function to be undefined. So x cannot equal zero. In b, the x-intercepts come from the numerator of the function. So we have x squared minus one, which gives us the two x-intercepts plus or minus one. And you can see they are plotted here and here. There's the positive one and the negative one for the zeros. The next thing we have are the asymptotes. The vertical asymptote comes from the denominator of the function. So once again, just like we had the domain restriction, x cannot equal zero, well, that causes a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. The horizontal asymptote comes from highest power in the numerator divided by highest power in the denominator, which reduces to one over x. And whenever the power in the numerator is smaller than that of the denominator, you get a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So that's sketched in as well. Um, next, we're going to look at the intervals for increasing and decreasing, and we are focusing on the first derivative, which is here. So the two places we look are, we set the numerator equal to zero, and then we set the denominator essentially equal to zero, because again, when the denominator equals zero, then the, um, the derivative does not exist. So we solve 3 minus x squared equals 0, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So we have these three values, plus or minus root 3, and then 0, and we put them on the number line. Then what we need to do is test intermediate values to find out the signs on those intervals. So I picked negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. Those are all intermediate to our three critical values, negative root 3, 0, and root 3. If you plug in negative 2 into your derivative, you get 3 minus negative 2 squared, which is 3 minus 4, which is a negative 1 in the numerator. And then I take negative 2 to the power 4. doesn't matter what it is. It's positive. So negative divided by positive is negative. Do the same thing with negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 3 minus 1 is something positive. Negative 1 to the fourth is something positive. So positive divided by positive is positive. 1 comes out the same. And then 2 is symmetric to negative 2. 3 minus 2 squared is 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 2 to the power 4 is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. So you can see, as we switch from decreasing to increasing, we get a local min. We do not get anything here because it's positive positive, but here we switch from increasing to decreasing, so that's a local max. Those are the intervals for increasing and decreasing. It's just basically the written out version of the intervals for what you see in the signs here on the number line. <clears throat> then we're going to look at the local extrema. The local extrema are basically these points right here, but we need the coordinate pairs. So we know it's negative root 3 something, and I'll t of course you can see what the answer is, but that something comes from plugging the negative root 3 x value into the original function. So we need to look at the original function and plug in negative root 3 in here. Same thing for positive root 3. It's positive root 3 comma something. That something, which turns out to be 0.4, comes from plugging positive root 3 into the original function. So there you get your local min, local max, and we can plot those. There's your local min. There's your local max. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 coordinate pairs plotted. Finally, we get into concavity. Concavity has to do with specifically the second derivative. So everything for f and g is second derivative. Once again, you set the numerator equal to zero and solve. Then you set the denominator equal to zero. 
we'll find that this can't be a potential inflection point because it's not a point, it's an asymptote. But when we solve, we get the pip of plus or minus root 6. We plot all three of these hypercritical values on here, negative root 6, 0, and positive root 6. Once again, we test intermediate values like negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 4, and we plug them into, be sure you plug it in the right place, goes into the original second derivative. So when you plug these test values in the second derivative, you get negative, positive, negative, positive, concave down, concave up, concave down, concave up. And again, those are the written out intervals of what we just discussed verbally. So finally, we find the inflection points. As long as the concavity changes from uh, concave down to concave, concave up, this is a point of inflection. Uh, and then over here, remember, this was not a point of inflection. It's a hypercritical value, but it can't be an inflection point because it's not a point. It's an asymptote. Over here, we have the square root of 6. It changes from concave down to concave up. So it is also a point of inflection. So our two points of inflection have the x coordinates negative root 6 and positive root 6. And once, one more time, you're going to plug in negative root 6 into the original function to get the y values. And they turn out to be 0.3. And, sorry, that should that make a correction. This should be negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. So finally, we can plot those on the graph. Um, here is my point of inflection on the left, negative root 3 comma negative 0.3. And here is positive root 3 comma positive 0.3. Um, this is again where it's changing. Here it was concave up. This changes to concave down prior to negative root 6. Same thing here. It changes. It is concave down. And then all of a sudden at that turning point it changed from concave down to concave up. I hope this has helped you. Let me know if you have any questions.